Hey, how are you? My name is Emilio and today we're going to be talking about Wi-Fi, specifically how to get better performance and better security when you're setting up your Wi-Fi connection at home. Remember as always to click on my subscription button and on the bell to be kept up to date with all of my video releases. I really would appreciate it. It also helps me to continue to release great content. Let's go on to the video right now. All right, you've got Wi-Fi. It's set up, perhaps it's not working well. You wanna get some tips on how to get your Wi-Fi working better. Perhaps you wanna just get better security and get some good practices around setting up the security on your wireless network. One of the most important things is the position of your Wi-Fi router. It needs to be in the best spot. So many people overlook this. So many people would put it on the floor, they put it behind some furniture, they put it in one corner of the house and they can't get coverage on the other corner of the house and it's all because of the placement of the Wi-Fi router. To get the best coverage across your entire house, try to set it up as centrally to your house as possible. If I've got a room here and I've got a room here, there's no point in putting it here. You wanna put it in the middle. Put it as central to your house as possible. It's important to place your router in a spot that is away from any potential interference. So what am I talking about when I'm talking about interference? Things such as refrigerators, right? The big solid metal things that are gonna block your connection. Microwaves, the Wi-Fi is working really well. Somebody turns the microwave on, all of a sudden you lose internet connection. Well, it's because it's possibly too close to your microwave. Having it near any other sorts of electrical devices won't help. So try to put it in a spot that is as far away from any electrical devices as possible or any other form of interference. One big one is metal objects. You know, if you put it near a metal object, it can mess up your Wi-Fi connection because it's acting sort of like an antenna or a blocker. So get it away from metal things. Something else to consider is the actual structure of your house, the walls themselves. Are they solid brick? Are they just plaster? Is there insulation between your walls? Making sure that wherever it is, it's got as clear of a view across your house and don't put it right next to, don't put it in a corner where all the walls around there are brick. You're gonna potentially have some trouble with that. Something else that helps is putting your Wi-Fi router as high as possible. If you can mount it from the ceiling, excellent. The higher it is, the better. So don't put it on the floor, put it middle, eye level. If you can put it higher, even better. If your router has antennas, you can actually position those in a particular way so that the signal travels that way. You could get better antennas if you do have some of those. You can get antenna boosters. If your router does not even have an antenna, perhaps you can buy an antenna to connect to it and that will help you boost your network signal. You could look at getting a Wi-Fi extender or Wi-Fi repeater. Essentially a little device, it'll cost you a little bit of money to get, that will connect into your existing Wi-Fi network and boost your Wi-Fi network across a different area of your house. So if you have your Wi-Fi router here, you can put your repeater on the other side of your house as long as it can connect to this and then it essentially will just boost the signal further from this repeater itself, which is awesome. Pick a unique name. Um, don't just call your router Joe Smith House because all your neighbors, they're gonna see that. They're gonna know Joe Smith lives near here because I can see his wireless network. Pick something that is unique, something that is complex. To increase your security even a little bit more, you could actually even hide your name altogether. Hide your Wi-Fi name, won't even appear on the list. So if you scanned your network, anybody scans your, your their network, yours will not show up on the list. Um, you could actually then have to manually put it in, but that could be another way you could hide it altogether. Use a strong password, something that is so overlooked. Make it complex. Don't make your password password. Don't make your password admin. Don't make it something simple. The amount of times that people are using or you know hopping on Wi-Fi networks that they shouldn't, it's because the passwords were so easy to crack. If you have people over, don't just give your Wi-Fi password to them to be able to log in. Don't even connect the devices to your Wi-Fi network unless you want them to, because they could just come next week sit outside in their car and be chewing up all your wireless network. When somebody's on your Wi-Fi network, they potentially have access to all of your data, all your family photos, your videos, your documents, your credit card information. It's all there. So only give your Wi-Fi password or connection to people that you trust. It's important to also use strong, secure Wi-Fi protocol such as WPA2 
personal, or even the higher ones around enterprise if you wanna get fancy. You need to determine whether you want to use a 2.4 gigahertz network or a five gigahertz network. Nowadays, most modem routers let you have two of these different Wi-Fi bands, 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz networks. Here are the differences though. 2.4 gigahertz, the actual Wi-Fi band, goes further than five gigahertz and can also go through objects better than five gigahertz can, but it is slower. Five gigahertz, of course, is faster, but it doesn't go as far and it can and it struggles sometimes going through cert, you know through certain objects so you have to keep that in mind when you're either using 2.4 or 5 gigahertz a modem router that you may have you can actually configure to use one or the other or both if you are going to use both then you have to just consider that you may have potentially two SSIDs or Wi-Fi network names being exposed out on your network so that people when scanning you, they may see two. Um, there's, all, there's also technologies where you can leverage one or the other so that when a device connects into your Wi-Fi, it uses the one that's most, like that it works best with either 2.4 or five gigahertz. If all your devices, if you're fairly confident that all of your devices in your home will use five gigahertz, then use five gigahertz as opposed to 2.4. Now, when you're choosing either 2.4 or five gigahertz behind it, are what's called channels, Wi-Fi channels for broadcasting your Wi-Fi network across your home. The problem with these channels is that they can clash with other Wi-Fi networks in around your home that are potentially using or sharing the same channel. So a very good example is you've got your neighbor that is also running their own Wi-Fi network and their channel could be say on a channel three. Your channel is also on three or is on four. It's very close on the same band. There could be a slight degradation in performance because you're clashing on that same Wi-Fi network channel, which essentially becomes a little bit of interference. So what you can do is you can download off the internet free Wi-Fi scanner tools. But what you do essentially is you scan the Wi-Fi networks around you. It will tell you all the names, but it also will tell you what channel each Wi-Fi network around you. You identify what channel every other Wi-Fi network is connected to, and then you select the channel that is unique that is as far away from any of the other channels. So if somebody's using channel three, you choose channel five or six or seven, something that's furthest away from other potential channels. Many routers are set to auto so that you automatically will assign a channel. Others are statically put in, but what most routers anyway, you can log into the back end and actually change the channel uh, to something that is uniquely fits your environment. Something else is to make sure that you're using the latest wireless standard being 802.11ac or even N, which is the previous version. Most newer devices will be able to use 802.11ac and that is great. But what you can do is on your router, when you're configuring the wireless element, you can actually disable earlier versions, earlier versions say of 802.11n and backwards so that it only uses the fastest wireless technologies. And that way you're insured, that you're gonna get the best performance all the time. Something that you will have to consider is that all of the devices that you are connecting your Wi-Fi to, all your you know, smart devices, all your phones, your, com your computer, your TV, um, can use 802.11ac or n, and not earlier versions. Now, something that could be beneficial to you is even if you've had the placement of your Wi-Fi router in the best spot possible, but you're still not getting, getting all the coverage that you need. That doesn't happen too often, but sometimes you may have devices on your network. You may have hardware, you may have smart devices, smartphones, you may have software running somewhere on a computer, on a TV that is chewing up a lot of your Wi-Fi speed. It can happen. So what you can do is you can get some free software. You've even got tools built into your computer where you can see all the devices that are using your wireless network and you can essentially stop those devices from using or chewing up all of the bandwidth that your Wi-Fi network has. Because you may actually be just be encountering a device that is just chewing it all up for itself and not allowing it to share to other devices. So identifying that may also help. Sometimes just turning it off and on again could be the best thing that you could try. Uh, the router sometimes can get stuck, they could get clogged up, there could be other issues, and sometimes just turning it off, leaving it off for a few minutes, turning it back on could actually help you out a lot. Something else you could try is perhaps doing a factory reset of your modem router, your Wi-Fi router, altogether. Um, this is completely resetting it, clearing out all the 
perhaps poor configuration on that router and then getting it reset up again. If the Wi-Fi router was provided to you via your um, internet service provider, they may need to help you reconfigure it. So if your Wi-Fi router was given to you via your ISP, your ISP gave it to you in a plan, you set up a plan for X amount of, you know, um, you pay per month for this speed and they give you a Wi-Fi router. That is great, but sometimes the Wi-Fi the router that they give you is not that good or it's a very cheap Wi-Fi router and that could be a problem. So you could ask your service provider to give you a better one. You maybe pay a little bit extra but they give you a better one or you can go down to your local store and actually pick up a better quality Wi-Fi router. Something else that needs to be considered is that one common misconception is that the internet and the Wi-Fi are the same thing. The Wi-Fi network, your Wi-Fi router, is the Wi-Fi, is the network in your house. The internet is what your service provider gives you. So sometimes if you're having problems, if you're having slow performance, it could be actually your internet itself. It could be your internet service provider having an issue. So if you've tried all of this and you're still having problems, it's still slow, maybe call your internet service provider for them to diagnose your line. They could check your modem, make sure that your router is performing correctly. Perhaps there's an issue somewhere in your network. Who knows, they could check it out for you. So how is your Wi-Fi performing? Is it performing well? Is it not performing well? Is it secure? Is it set up correctly? Maybe some of these tips did help you out. Let me know in the comments if you found this helpful, if it helped you out as well. Please also like this video and it really helps me out as well if you subscribe and like this channel because you get to see what videos I'm releasing but it also helps me to know and grow my channel and also release better and better content. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Really, really appreciate it. We'll see you next time.